Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really interesting modular mini PC from a company known as XDO. Now you might be familiar with the name XDO because they created the original Pantera Pico PC. Super tiny PC that'll fit in the palm of your hand. And this one also fits in the palm of your hand, but like I mentioned, it's a modular system. I actually love the idea here. And to tell you the truth, I'm not exactly sure on what they're going to be calling this because it just kind of showed up at my door unannounced. And really what makes this PC so special is the fact that it's modular. We can use it just like it is with this half right here. It does have USB Type-C up front. We've also got USB Type-C power in around back. And if you've got a monitor that supports power out and video in, it'll work using single cable operation mode. In this video, I've got a lot to go over and a lot to test. So before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. Super small form factor, and I'll tell you, this thing is putting down a lot more power than the uh, original Pantera Pico PC, but we've also got the I.O. module, and this is going to add USB, HDMI, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, also has a 3.5 millimeter audio jack up front, plus a 2280 M.2 slot internally, and we've got these two connectors right here. Built-in magnetic system, so all we need to do is just kind of set it right on the bottom of the main unit, and now we've got the I.O. module connected. And I'm not exactly sure if they're going to be producing different modules for this thing, but it does look like we could probably add a GPU to this if that's something they're thinking about. Not exactly sure if that's going to happen or not. Inside of the box, along with the mini PC, we get that I.O. module and a 120 watt power supply. This is actually a USB type C small form factor 120 watt unit. Taking a look at the connectors, it does look like it's a proprietary setup that uh, they've come up with specifically for this PC. But another thing I wanted to show you was just the internals of the PC side and the I.O. side. Over on the PC, it's got a 2242 M.2 SSD. This came with a 512 gigabyte drive. And right there in the bottom of that I.O. module, we've got another slot for a 2280 M.2. When it comes to I.O., with the module connected at the bottom there, you can see we've got two USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. But on the mini PC itself, up top, we've got a USB Type-C port, and this does support display out and power in. And around back for the module, full-size HDMI, full-size display port, dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and on the PC itself, we've got USB Type-C, but it looks like this is only for power input. There's a little RGB light right here, and it just kind of cycles through. I haven't found any way to kind of uh, adjust it from the operating system. I'm pretty sure there's going to be no way, but it'll just go through the spectrum, and it does look pretty nice. And when it comes to the specs, this is actually powered by a Ryzen APU, and it looks like there might be two different versions. So there's one with a lower-end 6000 series, but the one we have here is powered by the AMD Ryzen 7 7840U. Based on Zen 4, 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 3.3 with boost up to 5.1. And with this, we get the AMD Radeon 780MI GPU. So it's based on RDNA 3. We have 12 compute units and it clocks up to 2700 megahertz. This one has 32 gigs of RAM running at 6400 mega transfers per second. And as we saw, we've got a 2242 M.2 slot internally in the PC. And in that I.O., we can add a 2280. Out of the box, this is running Windows 11, but one thing I'd love to check out in my next video is SteamOS running on this, especially given that we've got that 7840U. And real quick, I wanted to show you single cable operation mode. The monitor I have here will do up to 65 watt PD charging out of USB Type-C, and obviously we've got a video in over USB Type-C. So I use that front port, we can power the unit up, 
The monitor also has some USB ports that will pass through over to that USB Type-C connection. So I can plug my mouse and keyboard into the monitor itself and it all works with the mini PC. Perfect for mounting this thing around back. Okay, so here we are, been up and running for a little while now. I've got a bunch of apps and uh, games that we're gonna be testing. All the drivers are updated. We've got Windows 11 here. As you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen 7 7840U. 32 gigs of LP DDR5 running at 6,400 megatransfers per second. And of course, we've got that Radeon 780M iGPU. Basically, we've got kind of the same thing as the Ryzen Z1 Extreme here. I've gone in and I've dedicated, oh, it went up to 8.5, that's weird. This was actually eight gigs from the BIOS, so we've got eight gigs dedicated to VRAM. And I'll show you here, this actually will boost up to around 45 watts when we're stressing out the CPU and GPU at the same time. If I take right here, we'll stress it, CPU Z, right down here, CPU side around 31, I've seen it boost up to around 35. But once we put a GPU load on this thing, we can do up to around 45. I think it's about 42 sustained. So we'll check that out while we're gaming. Not a bad little setup. Actually uh, really enjoy the form factor of this thing. It's been really snappy. Of course, with something like this, web browsing, email checking, document editing, 4K video playback, uh, you're going to be good to go with things like that. So what I want to do now is move into some benchmarks that I ran on this thing. And then, of course, we're going to get into some gaming. The first one we have here is Geekbench 6, just checking out some CPU performance. I've tested at 45 watts and 20 watts. At 45 watts, looking really good here with a single core of 2,494, multi 12,111. Definitely fallen in line with other 7840U powered mini PCs we've tested. Next up, we've got some GPU benchmarks for that 780M, 3D Mark Night Raid, 28,000. And the final one I ran here was Time Spy, coming in with a pretty impressive 3,317. Getting into some gaming here, we've got Borderlands 3 at 1080p, low settings. And uh, you can take a look up at the top left-hand corner, I've got Afterburner. At the very bottom, we've got the TDP, and this is anywhere from 41 to 45. Like I mentioned, it kind of fluctuates right there. Not bad at all for what we're seeing. Getting an average of around 86 FPS, and every once in a while, you will see a dip. That's just how this game goes, uh, especially when there's a ton of particles on screen. Next up, we've got Spider-Man 2 1080 medium with FSR frame gen turned on. This is how you got to play it if you want to go over 60, or you can drop this down to 720. Even at 900, it does a pretty decent job, but at 45 watts with this system, 900p low, you're still not going to hit a constant 60 with this APU. But with FSR frame gen on, it's going to bring us over that 60 mark, and it's really playable like this. Forza Horizon 5, 1080, medium, no FSR. We don't need it with this game. And uh, it does a really great job on these APUs. Even on something like the ROG Ally X at a lower wattage, it runs amazingly. With this, we're over 100 FPS on average at that 45 watt TDP. And we still don't really need to pull 45 watts with this system. And the last one I wanted to test here was God of War Ragnarok, 1080 low frame gen. Going to uh, 900p, we can bring this up to medium, but we still need frame gen if we want to get up into the frame rates that we're at right now. And this feels really good, even with frame generation on. It's just a single player game. You don't have to worry about it too much. And we're getting over 80 FPS on average. The last thing I wanted to talk about here was total system power consumption from this mini PC. This is from the wall, and with all of these tests, I was in performance mode, so we've got that boost up to 45 watts. At idle, pulling 9 watts directly from the wall. Average gaming jumps up to around 57, and the maximum I recorded was only 76 watts. CPU temps weren't that bad either, and they did keep the wattage low on this, you know, because we don't have a super huge cooler in this thing. When it comes to gaming, we average 70 degrees Celsius across the board, and the highest recorded temp I saw was 79. 
I'm sure if I was to up the wattage in this thing, we could get it to thermal throttle pretty quickly, but at 45 watts or 42 really, the system they've implemented does handle it quite well. Overall, I do think it's a pretty cool concept. It would be nice to see some more modules down the road. A GPU module would be really trick for this thing, and uh, I'm definitely going to be testing SteamOS on this. We can get official SteamOS up and running pretty easily on something like this with the 7840U, so if that's something you want to see, definitely let me know in the comments below. I can make a video in the next few days, but if you're interested in learning a little more about this thing, I will leave some links in the description as soon as I have them. I will guide you over to their official website, and as soon as this thing is posted, you'll be able to check it out over there. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.